multi everything, multi warehouses, multi pavements, multi countries. Uh, so I'm really curious what you're going to tell. And uh, we're here. Yeah, thank you, sir. And uh, yeah, so as uh, said, that uh, we will discuss today about how to build e commerce solution uh, when you have multi locations, multi warehouses, multi currencies, multi languages, whatever you have multi. So that's everything doable, of course, but requires some knowledge and experience. And yeah, that's what we discuss. So, hey, Doug. And uh, my name is uh, Sergey Lysak, and uh, I just recently relocated to Netherlands, uh, to the Netherlands, and uh, my Dutch is still in progress, but maybe in a year I will give talk uh, in Dutch already, we'll see. Of course, if you'll get used to that uh, Dutch weather. But uh, anyway, um, so um, we are in business, uh, e-commerce business uh, for eight years already, and um, provide a wide range of e-commerce uh, projects for clients from USA, uh, Netherlands, Italy, France, Germany, and we are working worldwide basically, and our team consists of like very uh, first uh, majority employees involved in uh, core development of the system. We have 20 people on board, 22 of them are front and back end developers, most of them certified, and yeah, uh, currently working on different, mainly Magento solutions, but not just that. So, um, the core uh, expertise that we have that's front and back end development, upgrades, customization, support, maintenance, extension development, and custom development. And here, it's, that slide says that it's just all about Magento, but in fact, it's not. So it's also Shopify. Uh, also, we have experience with XT commerce and with other platforms. But Magento is really like core business because that's uh, how everything started. And uh, yeah, I recently uh, was visiting my uh, home country, and we have uh, summer at the moment. So that's last 30 since the beginning of June. And uh, till last week, actually, I thought that summer just by passing Netherlands at all, but. Now I can see that it's not, obviously. And they hope that weather will stay here for longer, but yeah, somewhat, somewhat hot, but still nice, I think. And um, honestly, I have a lot of reasons uh, to stay here. Uh, and weather is not uh, critical, of course. And first of all, that uh, Magento is very popular here. So that's uh, market number three in the world after US and UK. And uh, also, um, Forbes uh, ranked uh, the Netherlands last year as uh, the third or the fourth uh, country in the world uh, for the global business. In. And uh, it means that like a lot of merchants here in need of our experience and uh, need uh, implementation of multi stores, multi warehouses, and so on. And that's why I'd like to share knowledge because that's very important. So um, let's get uh, to the topic. So first of all, uh, the presentation will be mainly about Magento. And Magento out of the box allows uh, managing of um, multiple uh, web stores uh, in one admin panel. So it has an architecture for that. And um, still, uh, even keeping in mind that it's out of the box, you can and have to change a lot of things. So, I try to make that slide as bright as possible, uh, just to remember that. So you always need to start with crystallizing business requirements. So basically, there's nothing more important than put it all together. And if you can do it alone, that's great. If not, you really need to reach out to uh, developers, marketers, I don't know, anyone who can help you to put it all together. Because without uh, clear business requirements, and we have uh, some, yeah, uh, experience uh, working this way as well. It's really uh, helping to save you money, human resources, and time. So basically, requirements, that's must, because based on that, you can define what structure you need, if you need multiple websites or stores, uh, currencies, what kind, So if, because also there are different levels, like base, base currency, display currency, so all that really critical. And I'll get back, not get back, but mention uh, requirements a few more times during presentation. So I hope that if it, if it will be just one thing that you will get out of the presentation, that will be already time saving for you. So uh, then important uh, that Magento has, uh, yeah, unfortunately, um, 
complex three types uh, of different uh, level of separation of entities. So that's uh, multiple websites, multiple stores, and multiple store views. I'll tell you a little more about that, but that's really like multi websites that's completely, you can sell whatever you want. So, I mean, like that's completely two different stores. So we have a client that on one uh, web store they sell lectures, on another they sell medical equipment. But that's all managed in the single uh, yeah, admin, but still it's completely different stuff you can do with multiple websites. Multiple stores, they are closer together, you still can have like different catalogs. For example, a good example could be if you uh, sell uh, men's and women's apparel. So you have like two different look and feel, two different stores, two different like uh, category trees, but still when you buy, you can add products to the same shopping cart and check out ones. With store view, it's even closer, but still uh, it allows you uh, to sell the same products, but uh, have different look and feel. For example, nice example, it's uh, like um, Christmas time. So during holiday season, you change look and feel, and that's a new separate store view with different look and feel. And then when Christmas is over, you just switch back to your normal look and feel, for example. And so that's all similar, but difference in setup and maintenance is really huge. So uh, level of uh, separation for different um, kind of entities. So, Store view, that's like the lowest one, and uh, it can have just a few small differences. That's like different language and uh, different scenes, so you can feel it different. The store, uh, that's already above to that. It can have also unique catalog, uh, category three. Uh, it can still share a card between different stores and share user sessions. So user can register once, but still visit like multiple stores uh, with the same account. And websites that gives you like, most deep separation between, and it can have different prices for the same product, so you can still have the same product for both websites, but prices could be completely different. It can have uh, different shipping methods, it can have different payment methods, different currencies, so if you sell in US and in EU, then you can have euros and dollars, and prices will be different. I will show uh, one of the samples uh, that we implemented too. And uh, it does not charge, doesn't share a shopping cart, or it can share, so that's also configurable, so you decide. If you'd like to have one shopping cart for both websites, so user can go to one website, add something to shopping cart, then go to another, add something more and check out, or if you want that, like, if it, he goes to another, or she goes to another, then, like, they see empty cards there, because that could be, like, stores on different domains, even. And the same with customers. It could be shared or not. So you can decide if you want to share or uh, if you need to register like on every website separately. You want, like, yeah, if your customer register. Then that's a uh, simple, actually, architecture. Not simple, but simple of architecture. And that's how it looks theoretically. So different websites, different stores, different store views, and all that managed in a single admin panel. So that's the biggest advantage, uh, that everything is under the same roof, uh, basically. So uh, let's look on a real example, uh, implementation of a uh, multi-website. Uh, that's um, one of our customers, South Scope, and uh, they sell engineer touch point solutions all over the world. Uh, they have um, 17 manufacturing and warehouse locations. Uh, in nine countries, in different uh, nine countries, and they sell to like 80 something, 83 countries, I guess. So they have really like wide uh, coverage all over the world. And here it's very interesting. So, like, for example, uh, as you can see, they uh, have uh, websites for Australia, United States, United Kingdom, European Union, also that's more, that's China, India, and international for all the rest. But uh, here, so Australia, United States, and United Kingdom, they basically uh, have the same language, so they're all English speaking, but still they have different websites. Do you have any idea of why? So what's what's the reason? Anyone? The currency? Yes, that's absolutely correct. So currencies for those countries are different. And you have a different, and also not just currencies in their case, they have also different prices. So it could be like, a uh, price of one dollar for United States and a uh, price for one euro fifty cents for you. Well, yeah, uh, but uh, one dollar and fifty cents for Australia, Australian dollar, of course. So I mean, like that's different currencies, definitely. And uh, in Magento, you can have different currencies on one website as well. 
but it will be just currencies that your customers will see, but in fact, transactions will be in base currency. So that's why if you want like, to charge customer also in currency, in different currencies, then you need to have it separated on the website level. That's very important to remember. Uh, another example, uh, that's uh, City. Uh, that's one of uh, yeah, the most successful online pet shops today, and uh, they're from uh, Amsterdam, actually, and uh, they started as a small web shop selling uh, smoking accessories and uh, uh, also provided Amsterdam tourism information, but nowadays they uh, sell worldwide, and uh, <coughs> basically they have forum with like half a million of subscribers, and that's really like international uh, company, and they found that easy that with Magento and Magento capabilities, uh, yeah, it's manageable and uh, what they really need uh, to have. And um, here is example like of UK uh, store and EU store, and that's product recommendations. The same page, but recommendations completely different based on stock levels in different countries, based on configuration. So they have also different marketing campaigns uh, for different countries. Because also, like, uh, it could be big holidays. Uh, for example, here in the Netherlands, that's the Kings Day, and you don't have Kings Day in UK, so most likely no reason to have like Kings Day promotion for UK customers because they don't know what's up. Uh, but at the same time, Queen's Day. Maybe. So I mean, like, it's really like uh, depends. And uh, yeah, um, go forward and to summarize it all, you need to implement multiple websites if you need uh, different base currencies, so currencies that you charge customers, uh, if you need different prices for the same product, so that you charge different prices for different uh, uh, countries, for example, uh, if you need uh, to have different catalog permissions uh, to restrict access to different categories, if you need uh, different promotional rules uh, or promotions, if you need to uh, separate also user and admin roles uh, for different websites, if you need uh, to customer accounts to be different as well, so customer needs to register in one store and to buy another, he needs to register once in the So all that uh, may be a choice of you, so you need uh, websites uh, for that. And uh, the store architecture is easier, so that you have a single website, but multiple stores, and it's also a good implementation because uh, with websites you need always to keep in mind that extra websites, that's extra loading the server, uh, you have um, higher um, requirements for environment, I would say, and basically uh, sometimes it's not needed, so I mean like you don't have different currencies, you want to share a shopping cart, and um, in that case I already mentioned, but for example, um, that's men's and women's uh, stores, so like departments, basically. And uh, yeah, you go, you buy, you add your card, uh, then you go and uh, buy something from another uh, department for your fiance, you add to the same card, you check out at once, and that's it. So I mean, like, really, like, uh, it could look different, but still under the same brand, under the same roof, under the same checkout process. Uh, and um, that's also a short summary. So you need to implement uh, multiple stores uh, when it's basically uh, just a bit different. And uh, one example I already have shown, another one could be if, like, for example, you have like specific brands. At the moment, we are working um, on one implementation for for a grants business. And like, for example, Chanel, they have different requirements. Uh, what so there should be in the catalog just Chanel products. So you can add to cart and then go to another section of the store and add Dior or whatever. But when you're in Chanel, when you search something, you find just Chanel. When you go to category, you see just Chanel. Suggestion, just Chanel. So actually, they have strong requirements, not just design, look and feel, but also what kind of products should be in that section. And basically, that's like a special unique category, which is like a separate store. But then, when you add to cart, you go and check out normally with all other set of products that maybe you had in cart before or you want to add. But while you are shopping Chanel, you see just Chanel everywhere. So that's um, yeah, basically uh, one of implementations uh, for multiple stores as well. And uh, with store views, uh, that's even easier, uh, of course. Uh, and it's the biggest uh, two things that you can do and should do with store views, that's different languages uh, and different look and feel. 
So uh, JavaScript, CSS, so that could be a bit of functionality different as well, of course, from that part, uh, because yeah, look and feel means not just look and feel, but also uh, UI, uh, UX. Uh, so you can uh, have different designs, you can have different uh, header, footer, so whatever you might need. Like also I mentioned an example of uh, like uh, holiday season store, when you get new store view just with new design, like a few weeks of the year, and uh, then switch it off. And uh, all transactions will be single currency, and uh, yeah, it will be configured on website level still. And uh, to summarize, uh, that's easy. So uh, if you just need different languages, uh, and well, you can also display different currencies because on store view level you can also set up like what currency will be present presented. Uh, but yeah, we'll get to currencies a bit later, so I'll tell you a bit more. But uh, yeah, still, uh, it's more unique cases and really like wide used uh, solution and different themes, different look and feel. Next important and critical point, uh, that's about multi-warehouses. That's pretty often when the businesses have uh, warehouses, different warehouses in the same country, in different countries, all over the world, depending on your geography. And uh, in Magento it was always a less hill, so it was an issue that uh, they always uh, just operate in one stock, global stock, all over across your warehouses or one main one, depending. Uh, that's already uh, what's part of business requirements, who, how operated. And the product basically is in stock or out of stock. And uh, we sold it uh, many times, implementing custom solution to support multiple warehouses like sort party module or developing from scratch. But uh, still, it was not that challenging, but time consuming. Uh, and uh, to have it in support of that uh, is very critical for some businesses. And Magento already sold it, and I'll tell you a bit more about as a new feature. So uh, just want to mention how important it is because uh, businesses, they lose incredible amount, uh, 1.75 trillion United States dollars uh, because of uh, overstocks, out of stocks and preventable returns. And that's really impressive and uh, multiple warehouses is part of that story. Because uh, if you have just like global stock, then um, you cannot really manage what's shipped from where, and then yeah, that could be a nightmare, I would say. Uh, but intelligent inventory it improves customer satisfaction and uh, it leads you more sales because you can can buy orders from shipping from different warehouses. You can like do partial shipment, and um, the most important is that that way customers will receive the orders faster or receive at all. So I mean like it could come for different warehouses, but yeah, it will come and they will be able to buy what they want, not just like get out of stock message on product page and that's it. So um, yeah, Magento solved that and they implemented MSI, uh, that's multi-source inventory. And um, uh, that's extension on top of Magento, uh, well than the latest 2.3 version. And um, it covers all kinds of products, simple, configurable, virtual, downloadable, grouped, uh, except one product kind bundle. But products are not covered yet. I guess it will be supported later, but not yet. So um, it enables you um, to manage multiple locations where you store your products. That could be warehouses, storefronts, uh, manufacturing facilities. So whenever you have your products, that's all you can manage. And um, that's the main uh, purpose of that module. Also from development point of uh, view, that's also impressive because like Magento has 450,000 uh, lines uh, of code uh, in code base modules and MSI on its own has like more than 10% of them. So it's really like huge uh, built solution. By the way, community was involved uh, mainly in the development of that part. And uh, yeah, that really looks like impressive and groundbreaking. Uh, so 
tell you a bit about like key features. Uh, I will be short, uh, but um, that's really like smooth stock tracking. That's uh, really uh, about uh, create sources with specific locations. What I mentioned, warehouses, storefronts, uh, partially distributed shipments from multiple locations. So basically, if you have a product in warehouse one and product B in warehouse two, Magento can combine and ship like partially from one and the second. Or if you don't have enough quantity uh, in stock in one, but you have enough in the second, it also could be like all combined shipping or all shipped from the warehouse, which may be not the closest one, but have uh, enough uh, quantity in stock. Also, it's possible to use uh, its API to integrate with third-party inventory systems, order management system, ERP systems. And uh, one of the last points, that's uh, support, uh, support of uh, store pickup. And uh, a few years ago, it was built from scratch solution for Frankfurt Airport with like 300 uh, retail locations connected under one Magento roof. Uh, and store pickup was widely used, but at that time, it wasn't really built from scratch because like MSI didn't exist at that time. Uh, but now it's possible to use, and that's uh, what we are implementing for a lot of our customers nowadays. Uh, not just pick up, but to support of uh, all those, their locations and organize their business better so they can ship return to different locations, which sometimes is critical for their clients. Next point is multi-language. And um, here it's basically uh, you need to remember uh, that support of multi-language is important, of course, but you need to keep in mind that it's not just translation, uh, but it's also part of design. So basically, because in French and Japanese, for example, we need different space for words, and uh, or for placeholders, or for input fields. And you need to keep it in mind when working with your designs on the design phase, or you need just to be ready to change it in the future. Uh, but um, of course, it's better to foresee, and you, if you plan to add more languages, you immediately like, Keep in mind that, okay, maybe for product uh, name, in English it will be enough to have one line, but uh, I don't know, in German it's better to have two lines, for example, uh, because of long words. So, I mean, like, it's really, depends, of course, on languages that you want to support, but sometimes it's getting critical, and even sometimes it's required to develop completely two different designs. For example, if you're talking about Arabic countries, where they have not from left to right, but from right to left, so it's completely opposite, and there, you, the only one way to support it to develop completely two different designs uh, for your store. And uh, yeah, basically um, that's what I just told. Uh, uh, the, like, creating first impressions that last, that like in different languages will be completely different uh, size. Uh, it could be well, like just if you uh, hear olives, or it could be like four lines of text, but you need to keep in mind that make sure the design fits. Um, next uh, part about translation. Of course, um, you need to provide translation. And in Magento, you have two ways to do that. One is like uh, UI way and easy way, is that's um, to use a blind editor. So you just like enable that feature, open like front end, and translate phrase by phrase you see on the front end. So that's uh, one way, uh, and sometimes it's useful if you need to translate something quickly and you don't have, like, uh, ask your developers to help you with that. But of course, when you are running a new store, the best way will be to get like special formatted files where you have like English text on the left and translated text on the right, and you just go one by one and translate all those, uh, yeah, basically phrases that you have on your web store. But of course. Also, when developers are working on that, they need to know that you need to support multiple languages. So that's like Magento best practices to develop the way of customizations and different new modules that they support that. But still, it requires some additional work that they need to keep in mind and do. So it's recommended to inform them just to be sure that they will uh, implement it in the right way that will support them in the future. Next point is about uh, multi-currencies. Uh, I already mentioned it briefly, and there are a few different uh, levels. So that's like base currencies that you charge your customer in, display currency, which is like the same as base, but also it could be different display currencies. And um, here's like short comparison. So like base currency that's used for transactions and price settings, and uh, it has like website scope. 
but for display, they allowed currencies that use like to display on the front end. You can look down to select that kind of currency. That's like on store view level. And uh, next point, you need to keep in mind that's taxation, because not just like currency is different, but also taxes in different countries different. So like it's different prices in different currencies and in different countries with different tax rules. So it's really like complex. Uh, also, it could be like prices included taxes, like VAT, for example, in the Netherlands, or excluded taxes like sales tax uh, in the uh, United States. And that's also like different approach. And Magento is supporting it all, but still, like for example, uh, one sample that I mentioned already. So that's like uh, South Coast store, and uh, they have a price for EU store of one euro sixty three cents. And for US, the same product, but it costs less. So it's like one dollar and thirty three cents, just because their costs are lower, and uh, they can sell it cheaper there. Uh, and they can manage it, so that's the most important. Uh, so they import prices from ERP system, and they have just different prices in ERP, it's the same prices imported in Magenta, displayed and sold. Um, about tax management here, it's completely uh, yeah, uh, big topic, uh, and it's related to multi currencies, multi countries, of course. Uh, so I just briefly mentioned Magenta capabilities, and uh, yeah. Here it's really like, first of all, you need to uh, discuss with uh, someone from uh, lawyers, legal accounting department, uh, what taxes you need to pay and where. Because if you ship like small amounts from the Netherlands to Germany, most likely you don't need to register and pay VAT tax in Germany. But if it's both threshold, then you need to register and start paying it. The same with uh, sales taxes uh, in the US, they depend on like region where you ship to. Also, it could be dependent where you ship from. So a lot of combination, and it could be like federal tax, state tax, city tax, also some environment taxes for some products. So in Magento, there are different uh, parts. So that's like product tax class that's applied to on product level. So each product like has identified tax class. So they, there could be some tax exempts for some products. Um, then also shipping tax class because sometimes you need to add extra tax on shipping costs. And also customer tax class, because there could be like B2C or B2B customers. And in some cases, you might need to exclude VAT, for example, uh, sell it to B2B. Uh, so they will see prices without uh, VAT. Or some customers could be tax exempt, uh, too, because of some, they have uh, some exempts applicable to them. So um, yeah, so that's uh, really how it all works and different, uh, really flexible. So depending on location, where from, and uh, tax classes and tax rates, um, you can all configure it all. And here it's like sample screen or uh, screen of configuration. Uh, oops, new sound. Yeah, maybe not news, but uh, information uh, that you have. Uh, there are available some systems that allow you to import. They support uh, like uh, update and keep up to date list of all tax classes, tax rates for different countries, states, and so on. And you just import from that system, so you don't need to maintain it all manually, because otherwise you really need like, to spend a lot of time. But if you have a legal department, maybe it's not the case, but for small and medium businesses, usually that's an issue. And um, yeah, that's really dependent on like, uh, that's uh, like customer tax class and product tax class and tax rate, depending on like uh, territory. Yeah, so where you ship from or where you ship to. And also you can have different priorities. So like if you need to apply multiple taxes then you can define order of uh, how those taxes will be applied. But as I said, so like Magento supports it all and you can do it all manually, but also you can import. It. So it will be automatically filled with current data as we have it nowadays. And that's good, of course. So um, we are going to the end of our presentation. And uh, about multi currency, uh, that's um, important uh, to define uh, if you need it or not, uh, definitely. Then also, Decide like transaction of which currencies will be uh, like you will charge your customers. So what payment processing will process euros, dollars, any other currency. Uh, then also remember that single website uh, can have different displayed uh, currencies, but only on website level you have different currencies to charge customers from. And yeah, and of course uh, if you need to set up different prices for the same product uh, for different countries, for example, then you need multiple websites too. 
Yeah, and shortly in summary of the presentation. So first of all, as I started uh, my presentation, is you need to uh, put down business requirements. That's critical and important. Then you need to define uh, what kind of architecture uh, meets business requirements and logic of your specific business, because that's all you need. And no advices could be given without knowing what you're selling and how you do it. Then also uh, check if multi-source inventory is something that's vital uh, for you and you need it. But yeah, that's already here. Uh, then also independently on multi-store, you need to provide like product details, text, category groups, so that's like common for any e-commerce solution. Uh, then also to set up different pricing for different countries, you need to build multiple websites. And first, uh, you need to, and uh, last, you need to remember that multi-store includes loading times that affects performance a bit. So you need to keep in mind that if you add more websites, you need to like upgrade servers, uh, change maybe hosting, uh, level up your performance. So you need to pay attention to that. So it, it doesn't mean that you necessarily need to do it, but you need to keep it in mind. Thank you. Thank you.